Hello, my name is Josiah Aysen. Before I start, I want you to do something for me. Picture Africa as a company, and you get an email that says that they're going to interview you as the new CEO or the creative director for Africa. So they need three big ideas from you. So whilst doing this talk, I want you to then think about what those ideas will be. Whilst you're thinking about these ideas, I will just tell you how my big idea came about, which was to just have a space where entrepreneurs would just come and they would get the support and everything that they needed for them to create solutions. And during that process, and again, just like any other entrepreneur, you think you've solved a, um, a problem, you've given a solution without the thought process of the people inside of it. And I realized that, hold on, a lot of these people are missing key things like resources, whether it's funding, whether it's training, and anything else that they needed for them to be able to move to the next stage. So the next thing for me was to then look at ways in which I can support them much better. So I started a program called Code School. Code School was just really to identify skills that were needed in that particular time to ensure that the entrepreneur is supported as much as possible. Now the lesson here is that as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to identify those missing gaps, those missing things that the market needed at that time. So now I've solved the problem, you would think. I've created a new problem for myself, which is I have a lot of entrepreneurs male entrepreneurs, but we don't have a lot of female developers, a lot of female entrepreneurs in our ecosystem. I responded to the need by then creating another program that ensured that women will get um, the support that they needed to set up their businesses. While I was doing that, I just realized that, hold on, I'm also, again, targeting a small demographic, which is the area that I'm in, in Accra. But the problem was huge. It was across the whole country. It wasn't just Accra by itself. So how, you know, how do I change this big idea again? By forming partnerships. So as an entrepreneur, partnerships are one of the ways in which you can use in order for you to then bring your idea or your big idea onto um, paper. What I did is form partnerships with other hubs outside of Accra. And in the same way, think about your big idea. If you are in Zimbabwe, if you're in South Africa, whatever the case may be, and you have a big idea, how do you then get your ideas across the rest of, um, the rest of Africa? It's through having partnerships. And these partnerships are made possible because of what? Technology. What we were able to do was then train people digitally. And then by doing that, we ensured that we took our ideas to the whole country and it made it much, much, I would say, more effective in that sense. Not only did we stop there, we then took the idea to Kenya, took it to Nigeria. So it then shows you the potential that you have as an entrepreneur. You want to change the world. We tend to um, take a lot of ideas from outside and bring it to Africa and think that we are just going to copy and paste that straight into our environment, our community, um, you know, our sector, and it will work. And you realize that it doesn't work like that. So through all of this um, programming that I was doing, I realized that, again, that um, the training that we were given local entrepreneurs really was not resonating with them. Typical example that I give you is when we talk about elevator pitch. Now, as funny as it may sound, how many of us are really going to meet these billionaires and millionaires in an elevator, right? So giving you that 30 seconds pitch, intense pitching, might not be the right thing to do. So what did I do? Well, we changed the whole concept of going out and um, this whole pitching thing, we went out to figure out how to speak to customers, right? So we went into a normal... Um, we, in Ghana, we call it trotro. I think in other countries, they call it boda boda or something like that. It's a public transport and pitch directly to the customer. So what you're doing is you're getting information that is direct from the person that you're creating the solutions for, right? Now, are you always going to get the information that you're looking for? Maybe not. But the most important thing is you're taking something and adopting it to your environment and making it responsive enough so that you then get the information that you're looking for. How did this help? Well, the entrepreneurs that went on that particular project were able to refine the ideas. Now two or um, three of them, funny enough, are making revenue from 
that particular exercise because they've got phone numbers from some customers and then followed up from those customers. So it just tells you that as an entrepreneur, make sure that your business model, right, your idea is adaptable enough. And I think COVID has shown that that's one of those things that has to happen. Let me ask you a question. You're creating all of these great inspirational products and services, but have you thought about your customer? And the reason why I'm asking you this is, we did a whole lot of programs when we did in the past. What we didn't do was factor in the socio-economical side of that particular um, customer, right? Or the participant. Some of them could not afford uh, transportation. Some of them could not afford data. Some of them didn't have the laptops or the equipment that we needed for them to participate in the program. So we then figured a way, we partnered with a bank and a telco that allowed us to then provide them with these services or support that they needed for them to be able to then function in the programs that we're doing. And why is that relevant to your big idea? Sometimes the person that you're helping or the idea that you have for that particular person might not be what it is that they want right now or might not be able to afford it. So you need to look at your environment along the value chain and then ask yourself, who can I bring on board in order for me to then work with them to achieve what it is that I want to achieve. And again, that's what we do or that's what we've done in our environment every single day. We partnered with organizations that enabled us for us to support the women entrepreneurs much better by providing them funding. We partnered with telcos by giving us data to give to our people to then be able to participate in events. Um, COVID just showed that again, we had to adapt, change the way in which we train people Naturally, we train people in physical spaces. You have 30, 40 people in a physical space, and then you run your lectures um, with them. But then COVID then ensured that this has to stop or minimize in that sense. So what do we do? We then move all our training programs, what, digitally, right? So we started doing virtual training. Now, in the beginning, it was stressful, and it's always going to be stressful because it's something new you not only adapting internally, your customers also adapting externally. So we creating all of these programs for entrepreneurs externally cost money. It's resource in intensive. So you have to reskill in order for you to be able to do that. So being an entrepreneur is not just solving the problem, but also looking at how you can develop. What ideas are you working on? What tools do you need in order for you to be able to just develop? Adapt to the environment or the challenges that comes to you. And we've done that all through most of the programs that you know, we run. As you can see, the world is changing. Digital economy is where we're going. I have some startups that were agri-tech startups, so again, it's farming. But then we had to work out a way in which they can apply technology into what it is that they're doing. So the digital um, economy, how can they see themselves? Because again, with pandemic, that meant that they were not able to deliver their goods to people physically or people coming to them to buy their goods. So they had to then move their, um, I would say, marketplace digitally, so they became e-commerce. So that speaks to digital adaptation. So that tells you that you have to adapt digitally in order for you to survive. So idea is not just you want to solve this particular problem, but it's always about what do you need in order for you to solve this problem. We keep, you know, speaking about Africa for Africa, what does that mean, right? And for me, I've spoken about it in the past, but I'll say it again. It's about putting the Africa person or the African at the center of what it is that you're doing. Whatever your big idea is, you put them at the center of what it is that you're doing. Now, I can give you an example. And again, when it comes to training women, it's not just getting the women into the space and then thinking, okay, we've solved the problem, we've got women into space. We don't do that. What we did is we looked at the needs of that particular woman, right? Whether it's childcare, whether it is um, culture, what resources they have, the times in which they can spend in those spaces that we're doing the training in, right? And um, creating safe spaces for them to be able to be in. So it's about looking at holistically the problem, holistically the customer, in order for us to be able to then solve the problem. So we not only create an environment that is conducive, but then we also have to ensure that we put the person at the center of what it is that we're doing. The problems are always gonna be there, 
your big idea is always going to face challenges. Now, you need to look at ways in which you can adapt, look at ways in which you can pivot, right? And then look at ways in which you can embrace technology into everything that you're doing. So, as an entrepreneur in Africa, you have to make sure that your big idea is solving the problem for Africans across Africa, not just in the country that you're in. That's why a lot of the programs that we run, we look for ways in which we can partner with other African um, entrepreneurs or other African hubs in order for us to see if the problems that we have identified in our ecosystem is exactly the same somewhere else. So for me, your big idea should never always just sit in one corner. You need to look at ways in which you can partner with people. You look at ways in which you can add technology to what it is that you do. Let me give you an example of some big ideas that I feel like we need to then work on as entrepreneurs. Right now, the informal sector in Africa is huge. When you go across the markets and everything else, you see it. Now, why is it that we are not creating platforms that enables these people, um, I would say these entrepreneurs that are in the market, to be able to then become financially stable, banked, for them to get loans. Now somebody can say, well, M-Pesa already exists. Yes, it does. It was created by another entity. Now you as the entrepreneur, if you were to create a platform like that, that ensures that other people can just do what? Tap into. It's not telco specific, it's not platform specific, it's for everybody. That way you bring everybody into play. Now on the same platform, people can use that to get loans because they are tracking their data that they're using in order for them to do what? Get um, the loans that they need from the banks. You'll be able to then predict behavior. You'll be able to then suggest training programs that these particular entrepreneurs need in order for them to do that. And that's just the big idea in FinTech. Let's think about a big idea in education. For example, we saw what happened with Corona. People had to sit at home and, you know, kids can't go to school, we can't perform training. So what is the big idea around that? It's easy to then talk about, um, we're gonna go and put our work digitally. What we doing is we working with a lot of um, hardware and software developers so that we can create a hardware, that we can load all content onto it as much as possible where we can take this content to a rural area. Now, in that, we preload this, um, this device with educational content, whether it's for um, entrepreneurs, self-development, or whatever the case may be. Now, it's hard for it to be powered in the rural areas because of the fact that a lot of um, electricity is a problem, right? See, so again, we then apply solar technology to that, and then when, we, when um, we leave it in the villages, they will be able to access it now. Are they going to use um, smartphones? No, because some of them have no more feature phones that they use. So what we are trying to do is look at ways in which we can then translate the same information that you might have um, on a smartphone, just put it on a normal feature phone for them to be able to use. Right? That is our big idea. How are we going to take educational content to the rural areas? And it stems from looking at just the hardware and the software, but also the human being. How are they accessing information already? And which language are they speaking? And so we are looking at ways in which we can turn um, English into local dialects for them to be able to translate and then access that information. So we are pushing technology in ways that we never did before. Now, another big idea that we have around health, infrastructure is a problem. And a lot of the startups that we work with, particularly in the health sector, have worked out that they can use drones to send uh, medicine information to um, potential um, patients, right? Tracking people, telling them you know, about their pregnancy or their illness and everything else, and even medicine. So we're looking at ways in which we can use digital technology to ensure that we send information, critical life-changing information to people in the rural areas. So our big idea is not just helping the entrepreneur, but it's also looking at ways in which we can use technology adaptations to then wrap around what it is that the person is doing. So not only are we changing the fintech, um, you know, the banking sector, we're changing the education sector, we're also changing the health sector, and then making sure that you know, all of these sectors come together as one to support the entrepreneur. But the most important thing, the most important person here 
is always the customer. See, so we are creating technology or we're creating solutions that centers around this particular person. Let's take the music industry, for example, or the music and the creative and the fashion industry, for example. Now, that industry is growing. Where is the big idea in marrying all of them? Because when you look at hip hop in the 90s, music, fashion, and um, video married itself. So the big idea now should be, how do we create, um, create streaming services that allows creatives to be able to then put these videos on, fashion designers to be able to then create runways digitally for people to access them and pay for it. Or for film producers to be able to then do what? Create films, script films, and even create digital films that you know, an actor can be in Ghana, an actor can be in Zimbabwe, where they can be in the same scene together and they can act on the same movie together. That should be a big idea, right? And how do we make money um, out of it? How do we monetize it? We need to be creating our own um, streaming services. Why is it that the likes of the Netflix is only accessible to people in um, the urban areas? It should be for people externally too. So then the question is, what is the big idea as a creative for you to then you know, solve that problem? So for me, in a nutshell, all I would say to you is, your big idea should not just be limited to your environment, but think beyond that and think about the possible partnerships that you can form in order for you to then get that big idea you know, onto the market and for it to then monetize for you to be able to make money. So with that said, don't let your big idea die in just one area. Let your big idea grow in different areas by forming partnerships, by adapting, looking at digital technologies, how you can use digital technologies for you to be able to get to the point that you want to get to. So with that said, thank you very much and looking forward to your questions.